Galatasaray, famously one of the game's most intensely passionate fan bases. Uh, we wondered who we could get in studio to give us an understanding of the fiery devotion of these Turkish fans. Of course, we've got just the man. <laughs> yes, the Turkish Cup final of 1996, and the winning Galatasaray manager plants the club's colours on the centre circle of <laughs> rival Fenerbahce's turf. That man is sitting right beside me. <laughs> Brian, what on earth were you thinking? Um, have we got time for it? I don't know if we've got time for it. It wasn't, it wasn't the sort of <clears throat> cleverest thing I've ever done. <laughs> but it was, it was in response to one of the directors going back nine months who had um, questioned what Galatas were doing and signing me. Uh, he referred to me as a cripple at the time because I had open heart surgery. So. Nine months for the Roma, win the cup in their stadium, big flags handed over from the supporters. My turn to wave it. A couple of waves, hand it, look to hand it to someone, they've all gone up to the halfway line. So I've now got this flag jogging back up to the halfway line to get the cup, <laughs> look into the emptying stands, and I see this, this director in the director's, director's box sort of looking down, I thought, hmm, <laughs> I'll show you who's a cripple. <laughs> and then, obviously, once I planted it, I thought it was a good idea when I got it into the ground, turned around and... Um, their supporters weren't too happy. They were trying to get onto the pitch, and I found a bit of pace from somewhere, and managed to get underneath the police shields into the tunnel in safety. And the moment has been gone down in, in legend. In, well, I'm in sitting the in the dressing room. I'm thinking <laughs> that when the, when the president comes down and have my air ticket back home tomorrow morning, they all, all, I've never kissed as many mustachioed men in my life. They all, had, <laughs> all the directors had tears in their eyes, and it went down really well. Yeah, as I said, it has been uh, immortalised in sculpture uh, over in Istanbul. Uh, our roving reporter, uh, Niall Quinn, <laughs> yeah, was on holiday yeah, in the yeah. city recently. And this is, this is for real. This is in the Museum of Iconic Art in Istanbul. As you can see there, a uh, Adonis-like figure, not Niall, <laughs> Niall, yeah, Niall. Uh, <laughs> preserved in bronze uh, forever. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, Graham, your, your memories of, the, of the, 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 the passion of that club and the... Uh, the size of the club and, and, and the city oh, and all that. It, it, it did stay I, with you, I'm, doesn't it? Was, I had a year there. Um, it was just the most marvellous year of, of my football in life. I really got into it. And when, you know, I, I think I explained before, the board got elected for three years. They were in their last year and they said, if we get re-elected, we'll give you another couple of years. Well, they didn't get elected. Fatty Terran came in mm. and had a really successful time. But I, I, I was sad to be leaving there. I really got into it. I loved Istanbul. And if... if um, anyone's thinking of going out there, do not hesitate. It is the most exciting and interesting city I know of on this planet. Well, for a young man embarking on a managerial career, Keith, I'm sure you've uh, taken up that flag-planting <laughs> trip uh, trick, and we, we might see it uh, in the future as, as you go 